What's up, Cedar Mill Youth? Welcome to another night of Cedar Mill Youth Online. We're so excited that you've joined us. I wanna encourage you to continue to engage with us online. Yes, we meet every single Wednesday, but we also meet throughout the week. And one of those opportunities is on Tuesday at noon. We go back to the good old days of what it's like to sit around and eat lunch with our friends. We, we join a Zoom chat and we have a lunch together. And the only agenda for that whole time is just simply to be together, to have a good time. So join us um, this coming Tuesday on Zoom at noon. We'd love to have you there. Something really exciting coming up this Sunday. We have our services, Cedar Mill Online, at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock. And we are honoring our graduating seniors. To all you graduating seniors out there, congratulations. We love you. We're so sorry that you had to go through such a rough um, transition, uh, not quite as... Uh, communal and celebratory as normal, but man, we, we have so much respect and we honor you um, for, for this season that you, you've conquered, that you've gotten through. And uh, we're gonna pray over you that Sunday, but we're gonna pray over you in this moment here. We love you. Um, we're so excited to see what God has in store for you next. If you know a graduating senior, be sure to hit them up and just say, hey, you're rocking it. Good work. We're excited for what's next in your story. So um, before we jump into the, the rest of the night, let me pray over our seniors. Let me pray over some of the stuff going on in our world. And uh, let me just pray for what God might do with this time. God, thank you so much for this time that we get to join together online. Um, I just pray for um, just the injustice and a lot of the um, just unrest that's going on right now in the world. Um, God, I just pray that you would be the, the answer and the peace and the unity that we are in such desperate need of in this time. I pray that... that we would find our answer as we come running to you. We'd find exactly that just the living water that you provide as as we, as a as a community, as a church, as a youth community, and just as a world who um, want your rule and reign. I just pray that you would um, just just come quickly, God. We just are in desperate need of what you are in the business of doing. And God, I lift up our graduating seniors right now and just ask that as they're in this very unexpected season, I just ask that it will be this platform to just set them up, um, to just, just be world changers in this next season of life, whether they're going to another school next or whether they're jumping into the, to the workforce, I just ask that you would, um, you would just deepen their faith in such a way that they would step into this world with a whole new perspective and a whole new um, just ability to draw people's attention and draw their eyes to you, God. I pray that this season would just strengthen their faith greatly. Um, God, I pray for, for the rest of this night that you would speak through um, speak through your word to us. God, I pray that you would connect with us and you would, you would just open our eyes as we fix our eyes on you and, and we worship you in this season and in this, in this evening. God, we love you. We fix our eyes on you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
to be with you guys for another week. Um, I am one of the leaders for the seventh grade scrunchie squad, but I'm hanging out with you high schoolers tonight, and I'm really excited for this new series that we're going to be starting called Love Hate. Um, just looking about how we can be the love of Jesus practically in our world. So we live in a world where we use the words love and hate pretty loosely. For example, I love tacos, but I really hate raw celery. I don't know if it's the texture of it or it's kind of stringy. I just, I hate it. Um, I also love Disney movies and honestly everything Disney, but I really hate spiders. You get the idea. We live in this love-hate culture, and love is a really big deal to us. Most of the movies that we watch have um, a love story attached to them. Even if it's a movie like Star Wars where there's a greater overarching plot, there's still love stories sprinkled in there. A lot of the songs we listen to are about love and relationships and heartbreak. And in the church, we talk about how God loves you and how we are called to love one another. And on the other hand, we live in a culture that loves to hate on other people or ideas. So we make fun of celebrities. We bash people on TikTok. We even hate some of the people in our own lives. We may not say them out loud, but we have opinions on everything and everyone. So if love is such a big deal, why does hate, and specifically hating on people, seem to be such a natural part of our lives. 
There's a lot of ways that we can hate on each other, but today we're going to focus on one. We're going to talk about gossip today. Now, this is a problem even with adults, but you do have to admit that high school makes gossip a lot easier. Think about it. Outside of COVID, you're in the same place all day long, and it can be super boring sometimes. Talking about people, it can make things a little more interesting in a monotonous day of classes. And because everyone is talking all the time, it's easy for people's worst moments to come up in conversation. It's like a smaller scale of like a small town where everyone knows each other and everyone knows everything about your lives. Now you might be thinking, I don't gossip, but I do know people that do gossip. But the truth is we all have done this at some time in our lives. And when it comes to gossip, we all need to take a look at ourselves and ask if we do it. I mean, with so many things to talk about, why is it so easy to spend our free time talking about other people? Why do we all have this strong attraction to trash talking, gossiping, or spilling the tea about people? I think there's a couple reasons. First, we have insecurities. It can be easy to point out what's wrong in other people to help us cover up what we feel insecure about. It's an easy way to bond with others. It's pretty easy to get in with a group of people when you share some key information about someone else's life. And it can seem fun. It might be entertaining to be the first person to know about the details that um, is going on in someone's life or this breaking news about people. There's a competitive advantage. Some of us want to be the best, and so we'll casually mention how not great someone else is just to show how much better we are. We're sharing the truth. Sometimes we justify talking about people with the fact that what we're talking about is actually true and maybe they deserve it or brought it upon themselves. We're just sharing facts or telling it like it is. And we might have innocent intentions. Sometimes we just have good friends that we share everything with. And sometimes everything includes everything about someone else's bad decision. And like I already mentioned, gossip is not just a high school thing, it's a people thing. We all know adults who share a little bit too much sometimes, and it isn't a guy-girl thing either. When it comes to gossip, we are all part of this conversation. There are shows, podcasts, YouTube channels dedicated to gossiping and hating on other people, and social media has made this easier than ever. It's super easy to hide behind a screen and say or think we can say whatever we want to. And it's a pretty crazy time to be alive. But although gossip is a naturally accepted part of our culture, there's something inside all of us that knows that it's not good. I mean, if you've ever been talked badly about, you know how terrible it feels. It's not fun to be the subject of some other people's negative conversations especially when they don't have all the details about your life or they don't even know you. For me, the only time I want people talking about me behind my back is if it's something kind. Anything else is just hurtful. Everyone knows that gossip is a bad thing when it's about them. And we can all think about a time when we gossiped about someone else or we were gossiped about and how bad that makes us feel. So in a culture like ours, though, in a culture that loves to hate on people and ideas, how is it even possible to stop? Let's open our Bibles and take a look to, at scripture to someone who lived a couple thousand years ago, someone who wrote some of the best advice on the topic of gossip. His name is Paul, and he's one of the most famous Christians in history, and he dedicated his life to starting churches and sharing the gospel, and he had this really crazy testimony to share and bring people to Christ. And he would often write letters to churches that he helped plant. And some of these became books in the Bible. And one of those letters is now the book of Ephesians. And it was written to a group of people in the city of Ephesus. And this is a city that was full of culture, diversity, and religions. It was a town with a lot of different people. And they all had a lot of differences. And this type of setting is perfect for gossip. There was plenty to talk about and plenty to disagree with and plenty to judge. And for the Jesus followers that Paul wrote to, it would have been easy for them to judge what they saw and the people around them. It would have been super easy for them to gossip. But Paul, he wanted the Christians in Ephesus to operate differently than culture. He wanted them to be set apart. So his letter is all about them as followers of Jesus, living unique lives. Here's what he says in Ephesians chapter 4. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. 
So in this one sentence, Paul makes it very clear that unwholesome talk is not supposed to be a part of our lives, but I think there's more to what Paul is saying than just not using a specific set of words. This letter was originally written in Greek, and if we were to look at the original word for unwholesome in the Greek, one of the meanings is rotten, and I think that's a great word to describe what gossip is. It's talk and conversation that rots. It rots friendships, relationships, and reputations. I think we can all agree that this isn't what we want to produce with our lives. When we talk negatively about people or participate when someone else does, we're actually contributing to the rotting of some of the things that matter most to us. In fact, not only does it rot things around us, it might actually be showing something that is unwholesome within you. Jesus talked about this in Mark chapter 7. He said, It's not what goes into your body that defiles you. You are defiled by what comes from your heart. So according to Jesus, what comes out of you says a lot about what's going on within you. When you gossip, it shows something about you. And more than the words we speak, it's about the motivation that causes you to say certain things or participate in certain conversations. It's an issue in the heart. Let's go back to Paul's letter in the Ephesians. And he gives us an alternative to this unwholesome gossip. He says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. So in other words, if you choose to put the needs of others ahead of your own, and when you stop and think about a person and who they are instead of just judging them, you'll stop yourself from gossiping. You'll think about them before you speak about them. If you choose to build others up to care about their needs and help them, then you'll choose words that benefit them instead of words that hurt them. You'll choose to speak life over them. And I get this is a lot easier said than done. In a world where hating on people is a pastime, it's hard to be the guy or girl who chooses wholesome over unwholesome. But it's also one of the best decisions you can make because what you say about others, it says a lot about you. You know people who trash talk their friends, who spread rumors, and always have mean jokes. When you think about that person, you think about that negative part of them. It seems like hating on people is what they're about, almost like it's a part of their character. And then on the other end of the spectrum, when you think about people who are the opposite, who refuse to hate on people and leave the conversation when people are gossiping, when you think about them, it's usually pretty positive and it's easier to respect and trust people like that. So when it comes to your conversations, it isn't a question of what to say or what not to say. The real question is, what do you want to be all about? Do you want to be known as someone who loves others or someone who hates others? Someone who trashes people or builds them up? The good news is that we have this choice. We get to decide who we want to be and who we want to be known for. And for those of us who follow Jesus, this, that's why God gives us the power to be different and set apart. He wants his people to be known for love and not hate. Just because gossip is seemingly fun and it's normalized, it doesn't mean it's worth it to participate in it. Instead, we can choose to be about something else. We can seek this kind of reputation that Paul talked about when we're, we're known as people that use our words to help others build each other up and make people's needs a priority. We simply choose love over hate. So let love be what you are all about. Of all the things that we can be known for, let's start with the thing that Jesus said is the greatest, love. And in light of what is going on in our nation right now with the murder of George Floyd and many other injustices against brothers and sisters, this message is so timely. As followers of Jesus, we are called to be about love as we actively move towards racial justice. We are called to use our voices to help our brothers and sisters that are oppressed and discriminated against. We are called to protect, not hurt. So let love be what you're all about so that we can step towards healing and freedom, not just for us, but for everyone. And this starts way before words even come out of our mouth. It starts with us deciding to care about people no matter what they do. It then transfers to our words. So we all get to decide what we say and what we don't say. Maybe you wouldn't want to say this out loud, but sometimes we decide what to say by answering these questions. Will it make me look cool? Will it make me look funny? 
Will it make me seem smart or is it mostly true? And these filters, they often lead to unwholesome and rotten words. And before we know it, something rotten is spreading in our relationships. So we need a new question. And I really like this word that Paul gives us because it ties in perfectly if we want to be the people who are all about love. The question to ask is this, is this helpful? Before we say anything, we should use this question. In fact, we can put it into practice immediately. We can start tonight in our Zoom small groups. We can start tomorrow with our families. All we need to ask is, will these words be helpful? Will they build others up? And will they make someone's life better? When we use the filter of being helpful, it doesn't matter if the story is true, if the joke is funny, or if the gossip is good. If it isn't helpful, it isn't worth our words. If we choose to be all about love and use this filter, the words we should and shouldn't use, they become really clear. It's pretty amazing how practical this filter is, even though it's thousands of years old. Now, imagine for a moment if all of us watching this right now chose to let love be what we're all about. What would happen if all of us refused to judge, to hate, to talk bad about, and to gossip? Imagine if we chose to be the people that use our words to build others up. This would have a huge impact, and it may even change the views some people have on Christians. Imagine if Christians were known for being about love instead of hate. How much more appealing would it be to follow God, and how much more magnetic would the church be? How much more would people be willing to get to know Jesus if we acted like the thing that he said was most important, love, was actually most important? All of us get to decide whether we'll be known for love or being as someone who loves to hate. So let's, lo let's let love be what we are all about. Let's pray before we jump into our small groups. Father, thank you so much that um, you sent your son to just model your love perfectly to us. Thank you that we can look to your life and look to the gospel and see time and time again where you chose to build others up and where you chose to love even the least of these, Father, you chose to love the oppressed and people that were discriminated against, and you showed them that they were valuable to you. And I just pray that as we go into this week, Father, and especially in light of what's going on right now, that we would choose to seek your love as we look to our brothers and sisters, as we look to people that maybe are different from us. May we go into our conversations with that question, is what I'm saying helpful? And may we just Spread your love, Father, and your grace and your kindness to people. Thank you so much that you're walking with us as we become more like you, Jesus. And thank you again just for the love that you first poured out to us. It's in your name. Amen. Thanks a ton for joining in with us tonight. If you are new with us, if you're a middle schooler and a, or a high schooler, and this is maybe one of the first times you've joined in with us, please click the link in the description. And uh, we would love to get you the information of what it looks like to be plugged in in our Cedar Mill youth family. We would love for you to join in on the journey that, that we are on of becoming more like Jesus and making him known in our city and in our world. At this time, we're gonna jump over at 745 into our Zoom meeting rooms with our small groups to just talk a little bit further about the teaching and uh, just to spend some time together. We love you guys. We can't wait to see you again. We hope you have a great rest of your night.